was going to say this anyways, or did they actually think that this gave him the best chance of winning his trial, which then would mean that what you're saying is wrong? I, I don't know. I'm not... I don't know the full breadth and scope of what his criminal charges are going to be or what the, the nature of their strategy is, so I can't really speak to that. Okay, so here's but, the, do, do you think that this was at all driven in part by public opinion? Because it seemed oh, like Martin oh, Shkreli... Okay, oh, so this sure. is like this is the way that I look at this, okay? And I understand you know the ins and outs, obviously, way more than I do. But when you have a case that's highly emotional, that's being driven hardcore by largely uninformed public opinion, right? And everybody, nobody's thinking... It's like the fucking Brexit, right? I mean, just, but re, unrelated. But like or everybody's KG just being... Anthony everybody's or... thinking like really emotional. They're just like, oh, fuck this guy. He's ruining fucking medicine and oh, fucking cancer kids. Oh, this is the... Like, Martin Shkreli is literally the fucking devil, right? And then you put me up in, into a congressional hearing where people are asking me, like, do you think that it's right that you are literally raping cancer children in the ass with giant spiked dildos? How do you do that and live with yourself? Like, when you're being asked questions like that, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like if he would have been put on a board, and I could be totally wrong, if he would have been put and he was actually, like, set up with experts or in a more controlled environment to ask questions that weren't so insanely loaded, maybe he could have answered them correctly but i i i don't know man i i mean obviously anything you say is going to supersede what i say but like i feel like that there was no possible way he could have answered any of the questions in that hearing and come out like because if everything in that hearing was already driven that the fact that that hearing even happened was so driven by public opinion any answer that he would have given indicating that you know, like, hey, a company's responsibility at the end of the day is the shareholders, end of discussion, right? Why does a company exist to create value for shareholders? Any any answer that would have been along those lines would have put him into, like, a 30 million times worse public spotlight that would have just driven on or spurred more, you know, bullshit, right? Like, So so here, here's my take on what I would have done. Basically, I would have gone to Congress and been like, okay, let's, let's work out a deal. You obviously want cannon fodder to be able to make these sorts of changes or make some sort of policy uh, suggestion about limiting drug prices and all this. Because that's – it wasn't just him that was, you know – No, but he became the, the, the scapegoat board. for it, right? He became the scapegoat yeah. because – mostly because of his attitude. Because I sure. saw the whole thing and including the stuff there and after when they had Valiant next to him who basically did the exact same thing for the last two years and uh, checking up their – drug prices on existing stuff by 800% to justify their increase in uh, profits. And they, they, they tore the guy apart too, but he gave honest answers. He took, he took the public beating for the benefit of his company. And that's one of the things that I've noticed about Screlly is that he, he could have played ball. Yes, he would have looked a little but, stupid but getting the asked guy is a multimillionaire. Question. You don't think his lawyers approached Congress beforehand and said, like, hey, can we work something out? You really think that under their counsel, with all the fucking money that he's got, that there are some hacks and they're just like, yo, let's just go in and fucking troll him with the, well, the fifth? Like, here, here's the thing. He, they probably did, but whether or not he took their advice is an entirely different subject. And the other thing is, they may have not been willing to do it, but I would have still sat there and said, look, take the beating, you know, keep your chin up like everybody else. You're going to be in the same room as everybody else. The only difference is you're not facing, you know, federal f uh, felony charges, or they're not facing felony charges. You are. So you don't want to piss off these people anymore because you don't want to give them any more of a reason to come after you. But couldn't you My, do? But wouldn't but wouldn't answering the questions and quote unquote playing ball to some extent be exactly that? Where somebody asks you a question like, I I, I mean we could go back and rewatch it, but where they're asking these loaded questions like, do you think it's right that a company can check a price like, that? and you answer something like, well you know that's just how pharmaceuticals work, and you know I'm trying to make money, and that's how the business is function, blah blah blah. Couldn't they come back around and like, okay, well you think this is how business is done? Well you know what, as America. Americans, we're not going to stand for that anymore, and we're going to persecute the absolutely disgusting things that are going on, and blah blah blah. And then, like, just use everything that he said about how that world operates against him, and then just take him to court over shit like stupid shit like that, or like start going well, hard that's about not shit what like he, that. They can't take him over to court over that. What they well, not 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 quote unquote. Court. You you can't take someone to court over that, but that kind of stuff would spur on more investigation and more people that would fucking hate you that would find something to, to drag you into court or a hearing over, right? Uh, see, I think it's the opposite, where if you play ball, there, the American people have a short-term sort of attention span, and so does For Congress. Sure. Especially when you were coming up in an election year like a we what? were, where they're just going to kind of move on to the next thing, and that's exactly what they did. The problem was, Screlly publicly slighted them and did so over Twitter and stuff like that, and hell hath no fury like a congressman or woman scorned, 
you know, with their prides. So that's where they start calling up people. That's where they start exercising their influence and starting to get more digging, more investigations. Because he could have, like I said, taken it on the chin, gone. He, he would have had delay after delay for his trial. His trial would have been, you know, six, eight, ten, 12, 18 months down the line. And people would have largely forgot it by then. I mean, and like I get, yeah, like I understand what you're saying. I just, I feel like you're, you're, I feel like you're, I feel like you're applying this thing where, like, because one thing happened, you think that if you would have done something different, the exact opposite, whatever. Like, I feel like the other scenario could have just as easily occurred, where he does show up, he does take it on the chin, and then his trial is pushed down to two years later. But then when that trial pops up again, because people are so stupid and emotional, all it takes is one headline saying evil, um, evil cancer cost drug raising pharmaceutical CEO in trial now for blah, blah blah. And like that's that only that headline takes, and everyone's like, oh yeah, I remember this guy's guy's a fucking piece of shit. Fuck well, this dude like so, and then he could have just as easily gone to trial because of the things that he'd said that that would have made it you know that would have indicated that he did things for profit or whatever and then he would have gotten fucked for it and then you would be here saying like he shouldn't have said anything he should have just showed up he should have pled the fifth i don't know why he would have given any indication that he was doing things in a, in a legal business manner or that he was operating for profit it was so stupid for him to talk to congress like i feel like we could just as easily be saying those things no well no, and I, I, I disagree with you there because there are two factors that weigh heavily in his favor uh, if he goes down the line later on without making such a big fuss. One is the fact that he could always option for a bench trial, which means you're going to get a judge deciding your fate, less likely a jury. And under those circumstances, you're more likely to get a fair outcome. And that way, the lesser charges would be more favorable for you. And the case in Baltimore City was a great example of that, where the judge was basically separated himself out from the emotion of the police officers regarding F Freddie Gary's death. Um, whether you agreed with the outcome or not, that's a whole different story. But I guess so, like, thing, I kind of look at it, like, I kind of look at this, well, go ahead, you finish your thing. The, the second part is the fact that when you have a jury further down the line, you're going to sequester them. I doubt that the news stories are going to go and play so heavily that it's going to be like the headline that runs across everything else. Because maybe for the first day, but afterwards, it'll it'll move on. And jury selection will start to filter out the people that are going to be obviously biased. So you may have a little bit of bias, but that's always going to happen. And that's a lot easier to overcome than you know, dozens and dozens of extra charges. Because I've worked with legislatures before, and there's a lot of ego running around with the lawmakers, and you don't want to piss them off. It's easier just to, you know, take the public beating, let them, you know, exercise their their egos and stroke their dicks, and then just move on than it is to piss them off and then have their scrutiny for a long time there and after. I guess so, like, I'm gonna, okay, so let me try this, okay, I'm, I'm drawing a very loose parallel, but when I look at something like this, I think of something like the Hillary Clinton Benghazi hearing, where it seemed like that was kind of a similar line of bullshit questioning, similar to the Shkreli stuff, but Hillary did take that all on the chin. And what was it, like 10 hours or 12 hours of congressional hearing? And she answered every question, but she didn't really come out looking any better for it. If anything, she somehow even came out looking worse, even though the questions were like crazy, crazy heavily. Like, I hate Hillary more than anyone in my chat, and I think that maybe Benghazi was fucked. But the questions were literally like, you saw that there were terrorist activities here. Like, why didn't you have more defense in this area? When I was like, fuck, dude, like, who the fuck knows that an actual terrorist attack is going to hit a specific fucking embassy? Like, how do you even know something like that? Like, Hillary had no good way to answer those questions. She still showed up to the hearing. She took everything on the chin, but she didn't really come out any better for it. And people still hammer her over the Benghazi stuff. I feel like a similar thing could have happened to Shkreli, where he shows up, he answers everything honestly. And it just, I don't know, I, I guess. Uh... All right, so uh, let me, <coughs> drawing upon your Hillary parallel, the great thing that yeah. she did was that she did do that because there was some play on those questions as far as how stupid and ridiculous it was. And there was some play on her having to endure a 12-hour basically question questioning just over you know the same six questions over and over again and people did get kind of upset and that did sort of stop the benghazi hearings because remember they were going on and on and on and people were like okay well benghazi hearings benghazi and then she actually sat down and went through sort of the marathon and afterwards they stopped because people were just like this is stupid you didn't have to spend 12 hours doing this and so i think in the long term it actually wound up saving her because 
email scandal excluded, they weren't going to file charges against her, which is what they were ultimately trying to aim for with this Benghazi hearing to begin with. Well, I don't uh, think that I don't think they, they could have ever actually possibly. Oh, I agree. But that's what that was. The ultimate end game was that they would uncover some sort of like dirty smoking gun or skeleton in the closet that they could use to indict her. That well, but I, but I mean, it'll still be used as that. Like, uh, imagine there was a real candidate instead of Trump going against her come general time. Like, the Benghazi thing is still going to be brought out, even though, because how many times has Hillary had to use the line, I sat in front of, you know, 12 hours of congressional hearing, blah, blah. Like, she's used that line several times. She still had to pull it out to defend herself. Sure, but what I'm saying <laughs> is it's a lot better than her having to actually defend real charges. Whether or not they would have, you know, stuck or, you know, been able to get a conviction is an entirely different subject than her being sidelined during her campaign having to go to hearings or yeah, arraignments I guess so. or whatever okay. or um, having to face a grand it jury just, it seems scary that you could like that if you fucked that answering up that you could say something wrong and fuck everything up and lose everything though I don't know I just, just looking at it from Shkreli's perspective like if he would have said the wrong thing or given the wrong answer to piss off the wrong person or whatever during that hearing that now all of a sudden you know like everything is up for but my whole thing is that is if that he, he did it anyway those, anyway well, no, if he had given those answers similar to what you were saying, he would have been giving the same answers that everybody in that room would have been giving. So he would have been able to point to everybody else and say, look, as much as you hate me, look, and this is kind of what he said publicly, and he's right to a degree, which is that this is part of the way the industry works. But if he were able to sit there and say, yeah, I'm admitting to this, but ask the guy next to me the same question and get the same answer – then it becomes more of an industry thing and he could frame it in a better context of it, it's not just me that I'm specifically the problem. It's the way we do business as a whole. Rather, And then when he goes into his criminal trial, it's more focused on his individual actions rather than his part in, the, uh, Batman. in, in an so industry. Would you say that with Shkreli, he just needed to appease the legislature, the, um, uh, the government, what I'm not sure, what, um, representatives, rather than well, Hillary like, okay, needed to prove to the people. So, and it was in Hillary's best interest to talk because um, she needed to, because she's running for president when Shkreli, at the end of the day, he just needs to get past his trial and he's he's fine. Yeah. It doesn't really fucking matter. And so then, it was a matter of, I'm going to, I, I don't want to piss off the people that could come after me, but I, and he doesn't give a fuck about it, his public uh, view. Like people, he doesn't give a fuck people persona. think about him. Yeah. yeah. So. And, and he's been very clear about that, especially if you've ever seen him stream, like just the way that he's so flippant and, you know, doesn't yeah. give a fuck about so, anything. Uh, kind the of people, speaks that. Yeah, so appease them and then not give a fuck about the public outcry while then Hillary, she, she's running for president. She can't piss off the majority of people. So she sat down and just she had to. Well, no but choice. they kind of, I, uh, I, I, I remember, they kind of have to play the similar game because if, if Martin Shkreli gets on the bad side of, I, it seems like some, when you get into something like SEC violations and shit, it seems like if you dig deep enough on any person, if you draw that much attention, you're going to get fucked, right? It, that, that kind of like, especially somebody that plays the wow. kind of games that Martin Shkreli does, right? Whether you, you know, you're buying the super undervalued companies and trying to, you know, build them up massively. Didn't he, what was his turnaround on that company? It was like an insane amount, right? Based on what he bought it for and, and what he ended up selling it for. Like, it yeah. seems like anybody that's involved, it was like an, it was an insane, I wish I had the fucking numbers in front of me. Me and Sarah were talking about it on stream a while ago. It was like a ridiculous fucking turnaround. It was insane. But like anybody that engages in that kind of stuff seems like they could get caught for shit if you draw enough attention to you. So like if Martin Shkreli goes and says a bunch of things, piss a bunch of people off, and there's a huge ton of public outcry and it causes a bunch of people to turn their eyes on him again, it seems like it's kind of inevitable where you'll get fucked again. Have you seen Billions KBIA? Destiny? Have I seen Have what? Billions. No. It's a show about. It's a show basically exactly like this about. Um, wow, Morbus to me. Welcome to the Six Month Three Sever Club. Pretty much like Carl Icahn, and that he's like this big rating trader, and he becomes the focus of Paul Giamatti's character, who is a uh, U.S. Attorney's office, because of just how, I guess, aggressive and outlandish his behavior can be, and so the whole point is that he has sort of put himself so far into the public eye that he becomes the biggest whale in the room that everybody wants to hunt. Everybody to wants to see of. fall. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it, it's Wait, similar on, to that. On, and that's on, part of the reason why I would sit there and say kind of play ball. Wait, Apple, as you said that his big mistake so, was being like a public figure. I agree that that's bad, but he didn't yeah, really but, choose that, right? Wasn't he kind of made into no, that? No, no, he, he did. Like, like he was like, he was going to press conferences and rubbing his nose in people's faces. Yeah, like, he played into really it. Like, he played into it a lot. I mean, meanwhile, you have people who like do the exact same thing, who do hostile takeovers, leverage buyouts. They do like things that people fucking hate. They do proxy wars, but no one says shit about them because they're 
they're you know behind because they're they not behind their lawyers they hide behind their eye bankers yeah you know, like in the whole Wu Tang album places. like that stupid shit yeah like I definitely yeah. agree that he played it but, but I thought that that happened but, after point, he was already made another like, point, the example like of, you're talking about SEC violations <laughs> and whatnot like the majority of these people are spending thousands of dollars paying people like me to you know do their compliance work so everything <sighs> like everything's by the book like regardless of how much money you make like you're you're gonna be okay if you know if you're complying with the various regulations you're doing your whatever fucking well, you, I, but I thought that like the yes, stuff that's plausible deniability because you you're paying somebody yeah who's, be, because like, because you have licensed. a good faith you have a good faith you're making good faith effort to comply with statutory regulations and what whatnot by you know outsourcing it to a third party law firm so you yep. know sure yeah it's kind of like getting people to do payroll for your business right it looks better than doing yeah, it sure. yourself yeah, yeah. I, I I understand that having the uh, having the the neutral third party that gives you kind of a firewall between regulators or whatever um, but like isn't the kind of shit like when you talk about like normal businesses doing takeovers and normal businesses functioning isn't it a lot different than the kind of shit that Shkreli does where you get these people that will walk in and buy this company and then turn it around no. in like a few I mean, months no. for like literally like a million percent profit like an insanely like it's like, just no. activist activist um, investors that's what they do they, they wage proxy yep. wars they yep. talk shit about everyone they talk shit about existing management they you know they, they're green mailers they do a lot of stuff that seems really unethical but it's legal Okay. I mean, how much of this was just spurred on by the media, though? Seems like it all originated from Most the media. Most of it, I think. Yeah. I mean, well, he made or, a really good story, like, Pharma Bro fucks over cancer patients and yeah. has, like, an attitude. If it hadn't been a drug that had been around for so long and so cheap, I think he would have gotten away with it. But he chose something that had been around forever and decided to basically f screw over an orphan drug. And that's what spurred the whole thing. Yeah, the uh, problem is that I don't exactly. think really... it was so cheap, and the the markup was like from cents to what thousands of dollars per dose. Yeah, yep. but shit, that's, I mean, that's, shit like that happens every like, day. Like, that happens if all the if time. he's not lying, though, he said um, he reinvested the money to come up with a new drug to solve the issue because this is an outdated drug that had bad side effects. And, well, yeah, but the, but the but the but the but that's not how pharmaceutical research works you don't take the money and you put it into finding a better drug and it's like a like a quest line like oh we know there's a better drug we well no but you absolutely can reinvest profits but into R&D yeah you can so, absolutely yes do you that. can like, but you can't the, say the that, that oh well, we were looking for a better drug because that's like a, that's a that's something that we were going to find like that could essentially well, be no, no. But money. I don't. I don't think the the explanations he's given wasn't that like, well, we have this drug and it does this thing, but I think we can invent something better. So, I thought that there was already a really promising line of research onto like a drug that was just needed more funding to get there. Pretty much was the so, so his, his, his idea. On. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I so a little bit of back, you know, back information. The point of the way that the patent system works is that you're supposed to basically put in. You know, hundreds of millions or billions of dollars worth of research into finding whatever drug it is that you want to market. Then you market it, and then you get 20 years on it to basically do whatever you want as a monopoly to earn that money back. It's not necessarily to, you know, reinvest into something new. That's where you get investors. That's where you get other stuff. And that says nothing for the tax breaks, especially on drugs like these that are known as orphan drugs whereby the government's going to pay you money to produce this and make it more widely available anyways, because the people that benefit from it the most are going to, of course, be third world countries and uh, poor people who can't, you know, afford to keep up with their general health. But the whole point being that you don't, you don't reinvest the profits. It's usually you, you have the investors or the profits in the first place, and then you put the money forward towards R&D research to make it back later on. Well, in any case, the way he went about it wasn't really that fucked up. Wasn't he giving away um, giving away some of it, and also people could get it really cheap through fucking, I don't know. He, he explained that, No, that. the problem was, I, I, the, the argument that he had was that he could diffuse the cost through, like, insurance companies and shit. With, that the end patient would never actually be billed because there was some other part of the bureaucratic system between the drug and the patient that would absorb the cost, right? Which is kind of one of the big fundamental problems of our healthcare system, right? That j costs can be marked up in a ton of different areas because they'll be absorbed inevitably at some point, but at the end of the day, we all have to pay for it, right? 
Yeah, right, but and that's, every that's company does like that, the, though. Like, uh, I don't think that's a fault that. on him. Yeah, of course, no, no, it's not a fault on him. But you have to be very, very, very fucking careful how you how you talk about that because people are yeah, fucking mean, stupid. Like, people don't understand that businesses like this is like this has happened so many times in America, right? Businesses will act in whatever way maximizes their profit, and they should in whatever way is legal. Like when people talk about tax evasion and shit, and they make it sound like it's an illegal thing. Well, no, it's, optimal tax strategies are just something oh, yeah, that you have to incorporate. Reddit loves that. Oh yeah, Reddit when you talk about like offshore accounts Reddit. and shit. It's like, They're if like, that's we'll available we'll to you as a legal option, of course you're going to pursue it. Not and only and would you like, do have to pursue it, it, you'd be a fucking idiot not to. Like, No, not yeah, even that. If you, if you work for tongue. any government, if you work for any state government, local government, guess what they're doing? They're taking your pension and they're investing it in a tax neutral jurisdiction. Yeah, and how many so times that, do we borrow know, against social your, security your and shit? Is like, optimal. Yeah. Like, it's actually kind like of if, funny. If you're a bus driver in like New York or whatever, you're you're actually, you know, according to Reddit, you know, you're basically evading taxes because your pension plan is investing offshore somewhere where it's not subject to, you know, UBTI or whatever. I mean, Martin well, Scully is pretty much like the American dream, right? Like the new American dream, fuck no, over the he, system and he's make doing ten b five violations left and right. Like that's what he's actually going to. Wait, what like, violations? Can you explain for. that? Securities laws, like misrepresenting things to investors. He's basically, you're not allowed to lie to your investors, make mis materially misleading statements to investors about you know certain things, including returns. You know, and he he was he every single wait. So did he like kind of bend the truth, or did he actually show actually like show, falsified no, he statements? He, he, he was telling them he was telling them they were profitable, show. and he was he was funneling profits from one company to, to another. another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially, a Ponzi scheme to pay for the losses from one vehicle to the other. So you know, it, it's it's pretty bad. So is he a hundred percent fucked? He's hundred percent going to jail, or will he just like pay a fine and he'll like house arrest or some bullshit because I mean, it's white collar crime? Pretty serious. <laughs> Yeah. Esports, e what's the name? He was talking about a uh, law term. It's, you have to prove that the person knew what they were doing was wrong. Plausible yeah, deniability. What is this? Plausible deniability. Or is there another? He used like I a fancier you. term. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love you. Yeah, yeah. That. You know I love you. Shut up. Oh, like bad thought or bad intentions. Scienter? How do you spell that? S C I E. Scient. Scienter. Like science yeah. except T E R. Um, can I intervene here like for two seconds? Uh, okay, so I have a question for you, Steven, but don't get mad, okay? This is just oh, a simple God. question. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm going ahead, okay? So you just said, like, it's, it's wrong for companies to not be pursuing, like, money and because they have, like, to give it to, they have, like, a, the, the thing they have to, to their shareholders, right? So isn't that, like, what G2A is doing? What? What? Isn't that what G2A is doing? Um, yeah, isn't that what it's... Kind of, yeah. Here, So here is... I mean, it's kind of like a different thing. The problem is that, like, when you when you talk about like video game shit or whatever, we're like in a totally different world because there's no legislation or rules or laws or anything. Like, when you're getting into like international weird shit like that, like it's actually, if anything, you could probably say that it's illegal because it's a violation of the TOS of any of the keys. Because I don't think you're supposed to third party retail um, electronic keys, right? I, I think that's like a part of the agreement of buying them. So I mean, you could say that it's not right that way, but okay. I mean, wouldn't the better argument be that, yeah, you're supposed to maximize profits, but you're also not supposed to act in a manner that's ridiculously unethical? Well, no, yeah, I don't yeah, think that's a good... No, 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 no. I don't think that's a good argument. I Why think not? that because unless you get... No, because... No, absolutely not. Okay, I thought okay, maybe... Why? Because Why why? because the public is fucking stupid, and because the only way to pressure a company into acting ethically is to get the public to have an outcry, but the public is so prone to misdirection and misinformation that the public can't be trusted to be responsible enough to keep companies like that in check. I think that it's the mm. government's job... Like, you can point to so many examples. Look at, like, the, the genetically modified crop shit, the huge outcry around, like, shit that we've been doing literally since the dawn of time. But now all of a sudden like people are having trouble with like genetic modifications like that's an example of huge public outcry against something that doesn't even really fucking matter right versus like I don't know I feel like it's the government's job to give businesses the optimal path to succeed without um, without negative externalities that destroy the fucking world right I feel like yeah, but like the problem is like what government even regulates G2? They're like, where they're like incorporated in like Hong Kong. Or well, something. yeah, yeah. That's why and I said like, that. Like, when you, you know, get into like video game, you're getting into like international, like electronic property rights. Like, this is an area of law that nobody does anything with, right? Right now, right? Like, you would agree, yeah. that, right? Like, this is just literally like, it's whoever has yeah. the most money to take you to fucking court, and like the biggest guns will fuck you. Like, there is no precedent. There is or no law. Or has the local jurisdiction on their side? That's the other big one. Well, but local jurisdiction only protects you. It doesn't give you the ability to go after somebody, right? Like, if I've got local jurisdiction on no, my side in Nebraska. 
Nebraska. Well, yeah. I can't go after somebody in fucking Hong Kong and try to steal right after and take them but to what American I'm, what court I'm and shit. What I'm saying is, if you're like a big company and you can afford to sort of not bribe officials, but sort of leverage your economic standing within the country to go after a smaller business. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah that's which goes along with what I said earlier. It's just a bit who's got the biggest guns, right? Like, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Like if you were stealing shit from Sony, you better fucking believe that it doesn't fucking matter. You're gonna get your fucking ass pounded, whether what you're doing is right or wrong, right? Like, yeah, sure. But isn't all G2A's business based almost explicitly in credit fraud? No. Um, so G2A plays with like the two things. One, they do arbitrage, and another thing is they have a lot of plausible deniability, right? So the first thing is um, basically one of the things that companies do is different things cost different amounts of money around the world, right? It should be pretty obvious, right? A game that sells for 60 USD in the United States might not necessarily sell for 60 AUD. It won't sell for 60 Euro. It won't even sell for the equivalent USD to that, right? Get different games are marketed for different prices around the world for different reasons. What G2A does is it functions as a sort of arbitrage between these places. Places where, well, in Lithuania, you know, that economy can only sustain $30 games and they're sold for $30 there. Well, let's buy all the $30 games there and go and sell them to Americans for $40. We've made $10, Americans have saved $20, and it seems like everybody wins. But at the end of the day, all you're doing is forcing the company to go like, oh, well, fuck Lithuania. I guess we're just going to have to market all of our games at $60 and forget all, right? So that's one way that they fuck people over is to be arbitrage there because even the same price for the same game all around the world doesn't necessarily work because every co country isn't in the same economic position, firstly. Secondly, um, G2A will sell keys that are sold to them through third party people. So, you know, if somebody walks up, it's kind of like one of those things. Somebody walks up and be like, hey, Doug, I got this fucking stereo. You want to buy it? I'll sell it to you for 100 bucks. It's worth like two grand. You're like, uh, yeah, sure. Sounds good to me. And then you buy it and then you sell it. And then someone comes after you like, dog, this is a stolen stereo. And you're like, well, uh, sorry, dog. I don't know. I didn't know that. I just bought it from some dude. He said it was legit, right? Although I don't even know if that's legal in the United States. So, yeah, Actually, I was about to say, in the United States, I'm pretty point. sure it's illegal to sell, to sell stolen, stolen goods. goods. I think, I don't know if that can come back when you're not Apple. You need it's, that so, it's a knowledge requirement, though. You yeah, so it's like, so it's all, it's all certainty that they were stolen. Yeah, so it's all like plausible deniability, right? You're like, well, I don't know, dude, so, the guy came up and offered me a bunch of keys. What am I supposed to do? Turn him down? He seemed like he was legit, right? So, Destiny, based on your first point, there's actually a case that uh, the Supreme Court decided on this called Kurt Sang, which talked about a guy who was purchasing te English textbooks from, I think it was Indonesia or. Uh, Malaysia or someplace in the Southeast Asian area where they still taught their medical school in English. He'd port them over to the United States and then sell them. And the publishing company in the United States went after him saying, hey, wait a minute, this is copyright infringement because we didn't mean for this uh, version of the book at this price to be in this market. And basically what the court said is you have the right of first sale, which basically says that when you buy something legally, you have the right to do with it what you want within reason which includes the right to resell it. And so that's where a lot of people have been using this to their advantage by saying, okay, well, I've purchased it legally from another country. If I can make a profit off of it or if I can buy it at a cheaper price, it's legal. Well, I mean, I mean like, I makes, that makes yourself, sense in local right? markets, but, like, when you talk about, like, internationally doing that, I feel like people just get fucked. No? I mean, right right now, you can do the exact same thing yourself. You get a VPN and you get a whatever local site and you get the you download and everything. But the thing is that G2 is actually like institutionalizing it, you know? Yeah, they're basically taking a little problem with a little loophole that some people could. It would kind of be like if I were to build like torrenting is kind of like a shitty thing or whatever, but it's whatever. But it would kind of be like if all of a sudden imagine the next iPhone came included with like a torrent app and like a instant invite to like a private site that hosted a ton of shit, right? All of a sudden. Now, Torrent didn't become any more worse than it was before. It's still just as bad as it was before, but people would be paying a fuck ton more attention to it, right? Because now it's become like a like a much, much, much larger thing. Same thing with the G2A show. We're like, yeah, yeah, and you know, you could buy a VPN and go somewhere else or buy a game off a friend or a dude could get you something from fucking Hong Kong. But now G2A has like increased it to like an epic scale such that you kind of have to pay attention to it now, you know? Yeah, basically the negative externalities are just... You know, is that all too, the poor countries will get much fucked, yeah. right? Yeah, is that yeah. eventually companies are going to be like, oh, yeah, well, fuck it, sorry, like, every single person is just going to have to buy a key for $60. We can't, you know, we can't reflect prices according to what a market can sustain because the arbitrage is destroying everything. But that's what they did with the office. But what? I don't necessarily agree. I can give you an example. Uh, I was talking about this last time. Um, Wait, what don't you uh, agree with? The fact that they're going to just, uh, poor countries are just going to get fucked up. 
Do you think that? Obvious. So, do you think that every single country around the world can afford to pay the exact same price for games? No, I don't. Apparently so, because but what they I'm do just is they just they buy it and then they sell it in another market. No, but no. Wait, fuck. Hold on. Think... First of all, Hannibal, what you just said is retarded. Do you think that every single person in a poor country is buying copies of the games and selling to other people, and it's not I'm just not like a few? I'm not saying I'm saying that the market allow, seems to allow these people to rebuy and sell them in other countries, which dictates the market's pricing. If, if yeah, but but no, uh, the are, the okay. Market. Sorry, go. Where's Gigi? Go. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm just gonna fucking torrent the game if 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 I'm not allowed. Okay, that's totally different. Okay, wait, hold on, Hannibal. What you're saying assumes equal access to the market by all participators in the market, right? So I keep no. using the word yes, absolutely. Oh come on, no. really? When you talk about like if you talk about we could say like a Bitcoin exchange or like a stock market, um, if you were to compare one market to another and they both sell similar securities, the price there will be very similar. Why? Because if there's a giant gap in price, people will just trade from one exchange to the other, right? They'll buy okay, well of this security is yeah, selling arbitrage. for yeah exactly, which is when I, yeah or arbitrage. I think I said arbitrage, but yeah, people will buy from one and they'll just sell to the other, right? But that's because every person has equal access to those markets, that so those markets will reach equilibrium, right? But, but that's but, incorrect because even with the basic arbitrage some people have extra access or, or uh, unfair access okay but you're yeah sure but you're talking about unfair access and you're talking about like fucking scraping pennies off of you're not talking about one person being able to buy a ton of securities for a hundred dollars a pop in one and then going to another one and selling them for two thousand dollars right that kind of arbitrage doesn't exist right that would that would be because people have equal access to well, those uh, markets as well, opposed to that would be like import export where somebody buys product from one country then imports it and sells it for a massive profit kind of like what we do with china but i mean at some point, people have access to things that others do not, and they take advantage of that to make a profit. That's kind of the profit motive. What you need to do is somehow figure a way to minimize the ability for people in these third world countries to resell these on the market. Uh, sure, which, which is what we're, which is what we've been talking about. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's okay. It's, okay. It's, it's I mean, that's literally because, what we just said about. Yeah, yeah that's exactly so what we've been talking about. And I'm saying it's not because these people can't afford it. And that's that's the issue. It's because. People that can't afford it in those countries are reselling them for a profit that's causing the problem. No, no, I'm saying that that's, people in those countries can't afford it, so the issue would be if they were to raise the price to $60 a pop. Yeah, no, no, I I, I agree. We're, we're not even disagreeing anything. I fucking hate you, Annabelle. So, yeah, obviously the problem <laughs> the problem isn't that the people in those countries can't afford it or, or whatever. The problem is that people that can afford it have access to that market when they shouldn't, right, is what you're saying, right? Well, they have access to the market because they live there or whatever, and they're taking advantage. They don't even have to so live that, there, though. They could buy it through VPN or other people could be exporting okay, yeah, the so case in mass when they shouldn't be. Right. Either way, that access dictates the market's, uh, you know, value. Standard. Yeah, like, sure, of course, yeah. So it, you can't really. The only the only thing you can really do is just. I mean, I don't know what you can actually do. You have that. to hardcore try to region. You could try to region lock the key. I mean, there are things yeah, you could that, do. That used to be, yeah, that used to be the case. Okay, so here's my example. Let's you know, say DVDs. there is game X. Game X is like one year, DVDs. two years old. And it's all you can only like. I can either buy it on Steam for fifty bucks, or I can buy, fucking buy it on G two A for ten bucks, or I can torrent it, or I can wait for Steam sale to for the game to be like minus seventy five percent. What do I do? Like I, I, I'm not gonna fucking buy a game which is two years old for fifty bucks. It's just stupid. But I want to. Okay, but you but you understand developers. you're in the minority. The fact that you're even talking about torrenting puts you in the minority, right? The hardcore. You're like you're already in the fraction of a single percentage of gamers if you're able to no, torrent saying, something. No, and I'm just saying in the, on the, the consumer behavior thing, like just, just just like it happened with music, having a, a something that um, the face the the market like a black market or something is not something that's absolutely bad all the time because it drives like look at the music you you used to fucking you 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 and I are old you buy the CD for twenty bucks with ten songs like nobody would think to do something like this these days because this just just what happened from Napster and all these fucking platforms we invented bit better business models and we with the the music industry changed for the better okay yeah but so, you're we're comparing apples to oranges because we're not talking about like an industry as a whole. We're talking about localized prices. I think it's like a, it's. I think it's a different thing, right? When, when, when you when you go to sell a game into a region, right? Uh, ideally, I don't know if this is exactly means, but ideally, what happens is you do market analysis, right? You're like, okay, well, if we try to sell this game, right? If we lower the price, we're not going to make as much money. If we raise the price, not as many people will be able to buy it. So we look for an optimal price point, right? In the United States of America, we'll say sixty dollars a game is the best price that we can sell a game at, and we'll get as many people buying it as we want at the price we want to make the optimal amount of money, right? Well, let's say that we go to uh, East, uh, Middle, um, or I'm sorry, an Eastern European country, okay? And you, you, or I don't, I don't like ping on Eastern Europe, but we'll go to yeah, just Spain just or something like that, country. right? Any country like that, right? Um, we, we go to a country like this, so like, okay, well, we could sell that same game here, but $60 is too high of a price point. We, we, it has to be lower. At 60 no one will buy it. So let's drop it to like 40 or $50. Do you think that that's inherently a bad thing? So that more people in that market have access to the same product, or? 
I, I feel like you're already like making a mistake there. You should you should Why? lower the because because you can't have globalization from the top all the time because it's just how especially with digital products. If if you can buy some th- the same product elsewhere for cheap, especially when it's digital, people are gonna always look for the way, sure. Uh, and I agree with price. what you're saying that, and that's what we're seeing happening. But you understand that with that kind of thing, if nothing is done to stop that, that the logical conclusion there is you have to exclude those other cheaper markets from being to from being or, able to participate. Or find the business model. Model, just like fucking League of Legends does, for example. League of Legends is really fucking popular. Yeah, but that, that ca- how do you find a business model that can reconcile two entirely different economies where one person, where one economy is filled with wealthy people with tons of disposable well, income and go, another economy? I mean, you're just going to have one leasing skin instead of ten. The one way to do it would be to make the, the games so available and cheap in that one country that at some point, they basically can't sell anymore to the other countries, which is no, kind of stupid. But, what I'm saying is, but you yeah, just you have to evolve your business model for it to, to fit the. the yeah, yeah, the I know, I know, I know, no, no. But evolve your business model is something that that you can do that nationally or domestically. But when you start getting into international shit and you talk about evolve your business model, like what do you say to manufacturers in Detroit who can't afford to pay their people to create cars because they're competing against kids in fucking China that are two years old that are like putting together like fucking phones yeah, and shit? Like, how do you, like, will you, will you just go to them and say like, yeah? No, dog, you gotta evolve your business model. Like, no, no like you can't. Up. Well, yeah, that's because competing up. internationally, like when you, you're comparing like apples to fucking the planet Jupiter, like you're in such a completely different universe. That, like, I don't think that you can just evolve your business model to be adapted to like an international thing where pricing is consistent all across the entire world. That doesn't seem I mean, feasible. I, I agree, especially with um, with like goods, but in digital stuff, like. Uh, there, there's been a lot of people who are trying to evolve. The, even Twitch is trying to evolve their stuff for, to, to fit more people because uh, our grandparents didn't have this problem. We, we are the generation that's going to deal with this. If we just stick with like ads, ad model and all these models. Okay, well, we're this gonna is just, totally, we're going to into a totally different thing now. I mean, about ads it's, and not, shit. It's, not, it's, not, it's the same thing conceptually. It's, you, you can't just say, oh, I'm just going to fuck these people because they're, they're just going to download the game for free if you're not, not giving it. Sure, it's, not a, yeah, it's a balance. It's a give and take. So, you got to yeah, find models so, that work. Sure. I mean, globalization I, I, is real, right? Markets are becoming are much more intertwined today than they ever have been ever at any I, point in the history of all of... What I hate to think of it, but I think the best model is 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 free to play, but with like in game yeah. transactions. Exactly, that's they the have end, to, end result. to play. No, but even that gets you the exact same problem: free to play with in game models. Let's say people won't won't pay as much for a skin for their hero in League of Legends. You're like you're just passing the problem. On. People aren't going to pay the same for a League of Legends skin in the United States as they would in like fucking Lithuania or fucking Ethiopia yeah, or you Uganda. Or, tradable, then it doesn't matter. You but if you want. Yeah, but if you don't make them tradable, then it doesn't matter. They'll pay the lower price in their country. They can't switch it over to another Destiny, country. you should evolve your business model to force Nathan to stream games for an international audience when you are sleeping. better Barbie dolls. That's it. I'm sorry. Thing. Wait, say no, no. But people will just like find ways to buy and sell accounts. Then you could pay, you know, like a hundred dollars to, you know, have, you know, fifteen skins in your account, or someone will sell you an account that has like a thought. Like you're just passing. You realize you're just passing the problem down the river. You'll run into the same problem in a different area where people will start buying and selling accounts with skins already on them. Okay, and worse, what would you say to something like The Witcher or something? How would you? adapt that business model to make it so the witcher, the, the witcher is, a, is a perfect example where for example the, the reason why the witcher part of the reason why the witcher is really successful is it was made in poland so the, the costs of the game were half the cost of mgs5 for example and that's really fucking good and the Wait, game how was much really was it good. in the us i thought it was 60. i mean the no, cost of the game, the cost game. Of because of the game oh, the cost of the, of the game okay. so they were able to make so much more profit because the, the game didn't cost them that much because they made the game okay wait, wait 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 but what you're the talking about is one of the central Poland? issues facing first world countries today like yeah. what you literally just talked about is the exportation of labor and the destruction of your own personal manufacturing market right yep, that's the exactly. huge problem that fucking the the eu and the united states are facing is when you export yep. all your fucking jobs I, to other I countries. Agree. yeah so why would you say that's the perfect example isn't that a bad no, example yeah a bad example but I'm, I'm just finishing my point so you can see here how if you if you want to be successful these days, you're gonna have to lower your cost or find a better business model because the the way people used to make games or sell games or whatever is not working anymore. And these platforms are just exploiting this fucking loophole where for digital goods you can just buy them from everywhere. Yeah, so but the problem the is you have them? to find you have to find a solution that doesn't run you to the bottom of the fucking barrel. Which right now, which is what you're insinuating, is is the optimal strategy. Like, well, you got to find a way to cut costs. Cut, cut. Businesses have found ways to cut costs. That's why all of our 
our fucking shit is being exported to China for manufacturing. That's why all of our high skill jobs are getting imported from fucking India. Like people have found ways to export fucking all of the fucking costs to other countries, but that's not optimal. And you see the dramatically negative impacts they're having on fucking countries these days. These days, right? A lot of the people in the lower class, the fucking UK, feel like they got fucked. Spain's fucking unemployment is yep. like fucking twenty three fucking percent. Uh, manufacturing jobs have almost completely left the United States to places like Mexico and China. Like the rest of the world is feeling this pain of running to the bottom of the barrel to try to cut costs as much as possible. And it doesn't seem like this strategy of of cutting costs is working. It doesn't seem like a... I, I feel like we, we're just going to be the generation that, that's going to have to do this. But at, uh, at some point, these people are going to make China, like for example, China's um, middle class is growing so fast that at some point, the, those people are going to stop wanting to work for those pennies. You know it's how just, many the, people there are? That's already happening. Just, yeah, but you know but how many people there are? Or just, or let me like... finish. Let me finish my point. The, the problem is there, there was so of a huge difference between the poor countries and the rich countries that with globalization, now that we have those poor countries being able to uh, compete against this one, all these people are saying, why the fuck would I pay a fucking American to make car when I can fucking pay a fucking Chinese who costs me like 10 times less? But eventually it's going to fucking, the Chinese guy is not going to be able, want to work sure, that eventually it will we reach an equilibrium. But do you ever think that China is going to get to a point where they're shipping their manufacturing jobs back to the United States? I it's mean, never going to hit that I, point, I like, right? Like, no, I feel like just the U.S. has needs to focus more on jobs that cannot be ch fucking shipped to China, just like fucking Silicon Valley is making a really good Silicon Valley, where they're abusing the H-1B visa shit to import jobs from India? Like, I what mean, do you, like, what, how, like, there's no way this, uh, the bottom to the barrel chase can happen in literally any fucking industry. Like, people, like, again, that's what businesses do. They try to cut costs and maximize value for shareholders. That's all you do. I if don't you don't, unfortunately, if you don't have the, I hate to fucking say it, if you don't have the government step in at some point and so there has to be some kind of tariff, there has to be some kind of price control, an artificial one, as bad as it sounds, there has to be some kind of an artificial price control on the market at some point to make it so this kind of stuff can't happen. You're just running to the bottom of the barrel, and countries like India and China are going to own the entire fucking world. I 100% agree with you. I'm not Saying the, 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 I'm not saying otherwise. I'm just. I'm just. Um, how can I put this? The problem I have is like when, for example, let's say an American or a, a French or whatever Western farmer says, "Oh, why the fuck is people buying milk from other regions?" Well, dude, these guys are paid pay themselves ten, ten times less than you. Why the fuck do you expect me to fucking buy the same milk? For, for five times more, when fucking farmers, the easiest shit to do, just go there and you have machines doing everything for you. Why the fuck do you expect me to buy milk five times the price if I can get it in Romania five times uh, cheaper? Like, what the fuck do you expect? I well, but the problem is you're at like different. The problem is you're at different levels. Again, like I gave this example on the stream before. Imagine you've got a rich city that's built itself up over a thousand years, and then you've got a poor city that's built itself up over a thousand years. And the poor city is poor as fuck, and everybody's poor, and they're used to living poor fucking lives. And the rich city is wealthy as fuck, and everybody's happy. And they live their good lives. They buy iPhones and Nikes and all sorts of Burberry blue jackets and everything every fucking day. And then one day, magically, you connect these two cities via road. Well, all of the rich people are going to export the fuck out of all of their jobs to the poor city. The poor people are going to be happy to do the same work at fucking. 50 million times less the fucking cost all the people in the wealthy city are going to lose their fucking jobs they're not going to want to drop their standard of living all the way to third world conditions to compete with people in the shit city right it's just not a good scenario there's no yep. there's no winner in that scenario so yeah. the idea that you just need to figure out a way to compete with the people that are used to living in abject fucking poverty like well, how do you do that like that's not a healthy you I mean, the government yeah. to step in and tear the fuck out of the milk in the question. Yeah, you have to do right because this idea, this idea of maximize profit and do what you can um, in order to make things as cheap as possible has what's gotten the world to where it is right now. Right. Mm -hmm. This, that's, that's uh, this inability to protect your local jobs. Why do you think poor people in, in lower class and, and middle lower class people are so pissed off everywhere? Because there's no fucking good jobs anywhere left because all of that shit got exported the fuck out to other countries. So nobody can work in manufacturing. Those good factory jobs. The fuck you used to be able to work at a fucking factory and get a fucking pension from a fucking manufacturing plant. You can't do that kind of shit anymore because in our effort to, you know, free and open markets and let everybody trade at the market fucking value. Well, that, the exactly. market value, people that are willing to live in, um, Fucking. That's why we should build a wall. That's exactly what I've been saying. That's why we need to have the working. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying again, maybe. Okay, what I'm what I'm saying is uh, maybe you guys don't see the other side of the coin. When, for example, uh, unemployment has been divided by four in Northern Africa because all these fucking jobs come in there. Like people are able to work now, and like they're not they're not they're not want to they don't want to blow themselves anymore because they have jobs. So I get what you're saying, but it's not at all do gloom and gloom. Maybe it is in Western countries, but 
at some point you have to divide all the wealth of the world, right? I, I mean, you can't just like live in this fantasy world when all the West has all the money and the other people just die and whatever. Because no, 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 no. Like, oh my God, dude, come stop! You can't accuse me of believing this when everybody calls me a social justice warrior libcar because I wanna because I, 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 I want not. other countries to have money and shit. Okay, I'm not, you're listen, not. I'm not, you're I am not. I am more for spreading wealth around the world than any of the other fucking crazy Trump fucks I, in this chat. Okay, and I however, know. however. You have to protect. This is why Trump is so popular. This is why the United Kingdom left the fucking European Union. Because you have to protect your lower and middle class. And nobody's done it. Nobody's protecting the lower and middle class in the United States and fucking the United Kingdom. And places in fucking Europe. Nobody protects these people. And what happens? All of the jobs get shipped overseas. And I don't even want to say in an effort to spread the wealth. Because really it's just so businesses can make a fuck ton more money. So their yeah. margins can grow. And the prices can fall. And the fucking product they ship is increasing more and more and more. You fucking have to. Protect, you have to protect these these classes of people and you have to protect their jobs. If you don't, they're gonna, they're, I mean, what? They're gonna fucking revolt against you. What? That kind of mentality has given us Trump as the Republican nominee. It's gotten us I the agree. Brexit vote f by 52 48 split. Like, <clears throat> I, I agree. I'm just saying, like, all, the, the only winners right now are the fucking rich people and the Swiss banks because they get all the fucking extra money. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Shut the fuck up from all that shit. But yeah, wealth need to be. To be like spread better and 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 everybody would be happy i feel like uh, th there are two sides of this coin and again uh, to go back to the first point i feel like g2a is doing a really bad job at this shit but uh, uh, a company like g2a is something that i feel is not as bad as a concept because you have to have you have to have some kind of um fight back machine against steam being the only all, all, all and be on an end of the. Well, we're not comparing G2A to Steam. That's a totally different argument. Like is the it, the problem is, is that G2A is functioning as an arbitrage that's destroying, or an arbitrage that's destroying local markets of, of games around the world. That's the problem. But, and I mean, they facilitate but, illegal transactions like very very easily. Like you can convert stolen money right now. Like one of the easiest ways to convert if you get a bunch of one of the big things when you when you get like these list of credit cards and shit is how do you convert stolen credit cards into cash? Well, G2A gives you a really easy option to do that. You know, you get several thousand dollars or several tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of cash um, on a credit card, how do you convert that into actual cash? Well, you go buy a bunch of games, you sell the fucking G2A, no yeah, questions asked. that's fucked like, up. That's fucked up, but I, like I said, if I want to buy game X me, and I have no no choice but to buy it on Steam, the game is one year old, and I have to buy it for 40, 40, 50 bucks or wait for a Steam sale, then that's fucked up. Oh, that's also fucked up. I need to have some place where I can maybe buy the game for a lesser price, so I don't need to torrent it. So I like, steal. Okay, it but if the but if that price is forty five dollars, then the signal that the market is sending, assuming the market is functioning fluidly, is that pe most people are willing to pay that forty five dollars. If you're not, then you're in a minority. And if you want to torrent not, it or whatever, that's fine. I'm but... not really sure about that though, because like, are you, like, you can what go do you mean? to that's, see that's right how now the there are a bunch of games. Like, of course, that's the one. entire reason why they have different prices in different regions is to basically if, serve as the the market equilibrium for what people would pay yeah, but, locally for that game. If, but if they could make more money off a different they price, they give do it. 90 percent off in the steam sale like doesn't, doesn't that like ring a bell like because the they, really they work with the much, developers how the fuck to do can you, that how the fuck can you do a 90 percent steam sale on the fucking game like on in 24 hours like what the fuck because are, are, are you questioning how worse, discounts work I mean, this is something no, just, just completely say, No, this is not what unrelated. I'm saying. I'm, I'm just saying if a game can go down the price 90%, it means that maybe the original price wasn't really um, the, 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 the right one in the first or place. maybe they finished paying off their loans for the development team. Maybe they're trying to just get a last or bit like, of cash yeah, to like, on, maybe maybe not drive a new no, game. Like, like, there's a, a ton of thing. other things. What if, like, sales have plateaued at a $60 price? So you do, like, a huge fucking sale to try to get, like, your last bump before you yeah, ditch marketing for the game. Yeah, but that's not what happens, Come on. But that is what happens. This is exactly no, what is happening right no, now. No, if I want to buy Witcher 3, I, I know it's going to be 50% in Steam sales all the fucking time. And then it go back to the original price, right? Like it did, I've seen this happen o over the course of the year, all the fucking time. As soon as they yeah, but that's sale, part of their games. that's part of their marketing model, dog. Like that, there's so other things the going on there. So the only choice I have is wait for the sale or 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 buy fifty bucks. That's that, that, that's that's fucking me up. I mean, I mean, this okay, sounds no, no, like no, worse, but this okay, doesn't so sound like it, a huge problem, my friend. It, no, just it is, because, because online also, doesn't mean that you have that. 
you deserve to fucking have the game. Like you, you, have, you make it seem like you inherently because you fuck your human being that you deserve to have the fucking game. If you well, can't no, 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 no. It. The problem is that the problem is that Wurz is smart enough to torrent things, so it does put him in a different class. But again, that's why I said Wurz is literally in a fraction of a percent of people that are capable of torrenting software. Like obviously, he's gonna look like the average person only has two choices. Okay, well, I could buy it now for forty five bucks, or I wait for it to go on sale. Like, how bad do you want it? Well, I'll fuck it. I'll buy it for fifty dollars, or ah, oh, fuck it. I'll wait for it to go on sale later. Like those are the only two options. Wurz is really mad because he has the ability to get it for free. So obviously, you know, but you can't hold everybody up to that same standard because that's not what, how most people approach that market, right? Okay, I guess um, it's easier and easier now to torrent. Like I've been seeing it in the past year, it's become way easier, especially with the, the GOG uh, platform that's like supposed to fight Steam that's made by the Witcher guys. The, the game doesn't have any fucking DR DRM. So if I buy the game, I can literally put it on torrent and everybody can use it. Okay. Yeah, but that that requires the knowledge that torrents even exist. Like, my 40-year-old parents have no idea what torrenting is. Fuck 40-year-old parents. There are plenty of 20-year-olds that don't even know that torrents exist. Like, A torrent? What's yeah. that? Hey. I'm just saying, I want to give the, the, the guys an um, a, a amount of money for their work, but I feel like that 45 bucks is way too much, especially if there is a sale in two Yeah, but, the, yeah, but the again, you feel like... Yeah, you no, no, you only feel like $45, 45 is too much is because you can get it for free. Yeah. When so. your only option is paying sixty bucks or paying forty five, getting it, yeah, then, like you're not gonna get it until it drops down, right? Yeah, you're a completely different consumer. It's like, like you can't fucking tour into fucking car meme, right? What do you do? You don't fucking buy an expensive car. You like. Let's say you were to walk around like a high school or like a college campus and you were to be some kind of insane prostitute that offered blowjobs for, you know, $100 each or whatever. Who do you think you could Ooh, charge more jobs. money for? Virgins that have never had sex before or people outside of relationships that are really desperate or people that are in good relationships that they get a fuck ton of sex, right? You're always going to be yeah, able to charge the person without access to the blowjobs a fuck ton more money. Is it because it's unfair? Is it because it's bullshit? I don't, blah, 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 blah. Well, no, it's because the people that are currently getting some, you know, oh, fuck, I've already got access to this. I don't need to pay a ton of money for it. No, that's retarded. You're coming at this with the idea that you can torrent a game for free. So obviously $45 is going to seem like a fuck ton of money for you. But a lot of people don't even know that option exists. They don't even know what a torrent is. So looking at it, you know, like again, like what Assyrian said, you either buy it for 60 or you wait for it to be 45 or on sale. And that's the only options. And clearly, well, clearly, but apparently the market can sustain that $45 price point. Otherwise, it would be cheaper, right? Mm -hmm.